Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we're going to be talking about solving right triangles. So if we're trying to solve a right triangle and we know that we have to find some missing sides, we have a few options. So option number one, if we know two of our sides, then we can just use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to find our missing side. If you know one side and one angle, so first, if you have a 30, a 60, or a 45, that means it's a special right, so you're going to either use your 30, 60, 90 pattern or your 45, 45, 90 pattern. Or, if it's not one of those special kinds of triangles, then you use your trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. To find missing angle measures, we're going to have to use trig inverse functions. So a trig inverse function is the inverse of the old trig function. So you'll see sine to the negative 1. And then instead of putting our angle in parentheses, you put whatever the ratio is. So we know that we have our SOHCAHTOA, so S-O-H, sine opposite over hypotenuse. So on sine inverse, the fraction opposite over hypotenuse goes in your parentheses. Same thing with cosine with adjacent over hypotenuse in parentheses and tangent inverse with opposite over adjacent in parentheses. So you can still remember your SOHCAHTOA and use your inverse functions. Now there are a few calculator differences. If you want to use sine inverse, you just press second sine on your calculator and that will pop up with the sine to the negative one and that's sine inverse. Let's try an inverse example problem. So it says find the measure of angle A to the nearest degree. So the first thing we want to start with is just writing down SOHCAHTOA and also let's label the parts of our triangle. So if we're focused on angle A, the relationship between angle A and 15 is opposite. So I'm going to write OPP next to 15, so I know that's opposite. And then angle A has a relationship with 20 of adjacent. So I'm going to write adjacent next to 20. So now if I have opposite and adjacent, that means I'm going to want to use TOA. So I'm going to use tangent. So I'm going to just start by setting it up like normal. Tangent of A equals 15 over 20. And so now, if we have, we're trying to find the angle, and we have the ratio, these two are just going to switch places, and then we're going to use the inverse. So as you can see, the A and the 15 over 20 have switched places, and now we have tangent inverse. So on your calculator, press second, tangent, 15 over 20, close, and then press enter. And so let's just round to the nearest whole degree. So the measure of angle A equals 37 degrees. Now on this example, find X to the nearest degree. So pause the video and try to find this one on your own. The first thing you should do is label your relationship between the angle and the sides that you have. So the relationship between X and 23 and X and 47. So X has an opposite relationship with 23 and then a hypotenuse relationship with 47. Now finish this problem on your own and we will check it together in class. Now we are going to solve a right triangle. Solving a right triangle means that you know all the sides and all the angles. So we're going to solve this right triangle and we're going to round all answers to the nearest whole number. The first thing I notice is that I only have one side and an angle, so that means I cannot use Pythagorean theorem, so I'm going to have to use trig. So I'm going to name the three sides of my triangle. I'm going to mark which one's opposite, which one's adjacent, and which one's hypotenuse, all in relationship to my 48. So 70 is opposite of 48, x is adjacent to 48, and y is my hypotenuse. The first thing I'm going to do is solve for x. You don't have to solve for x first, but I just decided to. You could start by solving for y. It doesn't actually matter. So 70 and x have an opposite and adjacent relationship together. So in my SOHCAHTOA, I'm going to use TOA because it has an O and an A. So I'm going to use tangent. So tangent of 48 equals 70 over x. I'm going to multiply both sides by x so that it cancels out on the right. So now I have x times tangent 48 equals 70. I'm going to divide both sides by tangent of 48 so that I can get x by itself. When I do that, my tangents will cancel on the left, so x equals 70 over tangent 48. Then I'm going to plug it in my calculator exactly like that, and I should find that x is approximately 63. Now I want to find y. 
So the first thing I think is I'm going to need my 70 again, so that's opposite. And then y is hypotenuse. So if I think through SOHCAHTOA, I know that uses opposite and hypotenuse on SO. So that means that I'm going to use sine. We know sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, so sine of 48 equals 70 over y. I need to multiply both sides by y so that the y cancels out on the right, and I have y times sine of 48 equals 70. And then I want to get y by itself. So I divide by sine of 48 so that my sines cancel out on the left. So then I have y equals 70 over sine of 48. And when I type 70 divided by sine of 48 in the calculator, I get approximately 94. So if we solve the right triangle, that means we know all the sides. So we know we have a side of length 63, a side of 94, and a side of 70. And then we also have to know all the angles. Well, we know we have a 48 degree angle and a 90 degree angle. To find my last angle, angle A, I just need to subtract from 90. So the measure of angle A will be 90 minus 48. And so the measure of angle A is 52 degrees. So now I have solved the right triangle because I know all of the sides and all of the angles. Now let's try a different example. So again, we're going to solve this triangle and round all the answers to the nearest whole number. So the first thing I look at is I see that I have two sides. So right away, I should think, oh, I can just use Pythagorean theorem. So 10 squared plus 22 squared equals h squared, since h squared is my hypotenuse. So 100 plus 484 equals h squared. So 584 equals h squared. I'm going to take the square root of 584 and h squared. So h is equal to the square root of 584, or if you reduce it, two square roots of 146. And if you type that in the calculator, then you find that h is about 24. Now to solve the right triangle, we would need to know the angle measures. If we want to know the angle measures, we're going to have to use trig inverse functions. So first thing you need to do is pick an angle. I'm going to pick angle C. So I'm just going to draw a little mark there so that way I know this is the angle that I'm picking. Next, I need to label my sides in relationship to angle C. Which one's opposite? Which one's adjacent? Which one's hypotenuse? So go ahead and do that now. So 10 is going to be opposite of C. 22 is going to be adjacent to C. And then our hypotenuse, which we found to be 24, is going to be the hypotenuse. So now I would suggest use tangent inverse function to find angle C. But I would like for you to do this on your own, and we will finish this problem together in class. So this is the third problem that I'm leaving for you to try on your own tonight. The first problem was all by yourself. The second problem I just completed, and it was a partial solve. This one is a solve the right triangle all on your own. So with this problem, I'm expecting to see three answers. I'm expecting to see the side length of z, I'm expecting to see the angle A, and I'm expecting to see the angle C. So, so have those completed before you come to class so that we can check them together. And that is everything that I have for you this evening. See you in class.